Hello viewers, welcome to TLT, a channel where we talk about tech, life and tips. So today I'm going to be looking at, a, I'm going to be repairing a MacBook Air. It's the model number A1932. Pretty easy repair for DIYs out there. So let's get on it guys. I have already done my diagnosis and determined that uh, we only need to do a battery replacement. So we have to start by removing the back screws. We've got 10 screws on this mark. And once that is done, then we can, um, we can focus on removing the battery. So take your time to do this. Uh, it's a good repair for all the DIYs and it's easy. So once the back is out, the most important thing is to take the battery that you are supposed to replace the original battery with and have and compare so that you ensure that it's exactly the same. Because often, whenever you order parts from third parties, in most cases, if you don't do your due diligence, what will happen is you might actually realize when it's too late that you've got a different battery because every mark uses a, a different battery. So very important to just do that uh, due dil diligence check. And if you are satisfied, then you can proceed with uh, replacing the part. Right, so looks like everything is all fitting nicely. And um, and if you look at this battery, the beauty of this battery actually is that uh, it sits on a metal plate. So it's not fully glued onto the mark, onto the mark. It's on a plate. So what we've got to do now is if you look on the left and on the right, you've got speakers that are glued in. So you've got to unglue those speakers. They've got like a double-sided adhesive strip underneath the way. If you pull it, it stretches and just comes off. But otherwise, I mean, if you're doing it as a DIY, you might not really be uh, experienced enough to take it out without breaking it. So that way, that's still okay. You can still use isopropyl to actually remove it because it softens up the, the glue stick and it makes it uh, easy to to actually remove the the two speakers so what i'm doing now is once you put the battery in you've got to test it so you got to plug it in and make sure that the mark switch is on because in this case we just want to make sure the battery is all in good working condition and once you are satisfied that uh, that is the case, the next thing that you want to do again is you want to unplug the power. And then you want to, once you unplug, in fact, you want to disconnect the battery and then you want to plug in the power. In that case, it should actually switch on just like now. So it tells you that uh, everything is okay. Because if there is an issue with the battery, the battery has got a circuit in it, which can either stop current, depending on what sort of like current is flowing through it. So if the current is not enough and it detects that there is an issue with the battery, you might not get any power at all once it's connected. But the situation is different if you unplug the battery and then power the MacBook. Because if you don't know, you might actually diagnose this for probably maybe a charging port or you might think there are other issues when it's just a simple battery so you gotta all just do all those uh tests and and be satisfied that uh you know this is exactly what you should be doing so here i'm pretty satisfied that uh, everything has gone on well with the check so we just proceed with the repair
Yeah, we're gonna put our um, isopropyl, those two speakers, those big strips on the left side and on, and, and on the right side. Pulling all the adhesive strips. <laughs> Once we are done removing the speakers, then uh, there are strips just underneath the battery on this one where we need to remove as well. And then uh, we've got to soften that adhesive strip and we've got to carefully remove the battery, ensuring that we don't rupture the flexi cable. If you're not confident uh, or, uh, about doing this on this particular part, I suggest you actually lift the motherboard. But if you think you can do it, you can just slide the battery from there underneath the flexor cable. And then we've got to obviously clean the dust and, and so forth. This is just a common thing uh, that you'd find a lot of dust uh, once you open the mark. So once you are satisfied, then you've got to slid in the new battery from just underneath the flexor cable. And you should also just take care as well not to not to damage that flexi cable there that flexi cable is actually connected on onto the touchpad so you gotta just be gentle you know this is a game of patience if you are somebody who's impatient uh, then you've got to really think twice before you start so everything is simple right so the battery is nice in place and it's nicely secured so you've got to then uh, screw those two secure it with the two screws two on the left two on the right and once that is done then the next thing is to ensure that we plug in the power and plugging in the power should be the very last thing that you do once you are satisfied with everything you're gonna remove the sticker usually the uh, for every new battery it comes with a, a, a sticker you just have to peel that out otherwise if you leave it in there it might cause uh, static issues so it's uh, recommended to just uh, peel it off and you know electronics engineering you gotta just look at these things like an art. You gotta be an artist. A lot of it, if we take away the jargon, it, there are things that are very simple and easy to understand. It's only when we start to put jargon and all that. And the reason for this channel is to just make things simple, you know, because you don't need to be sophisticated to do this. It's just something that you can easily, with good care, you can easily perform it at home. And obviously, if you're not confident, then obviously, I would say consult with professionals. Or you could just uh, inbox me and I can, I can help you with it. Alright, so we're going to put our screws back. Just ensuring everything is uh, just as we, just the same as we took it, took it apart. A lot of these problems, they are just more like trying to fix a puzzle or just doing a logo piece, you know. 
that's pretty much what, what these repairs are, are about. I'm gonna just blow out any any dust particles, anything that we find, and uh, you gotta then obviously remember to put back those uh, speakers. And I like to clean out everything because there's nothing as worse as just uh, repairing something and leaving it dirty. And I, I like everything to look nice inside, even where customers don't see. I like to make it nice and clean. So just uh, give it a nice uh, clean. Uh, it helps us to it helps the speakers to sound much better than before. And also, it just prevents any further problems if everything is nice and clean. So those two speakers, they just uh, attach. They've got a double-sided tap. You can just replace with any. And then lastly, you, you want to power it up. Just make sure it's nice and secure. Pretty much that's it. Close it. And put the screws back. Just make sure the screws, they, they come with different sizes. So I suggest when you take them out, try to either take a photo so that you, you know which size goes where. So they are like three sizes. So you got to just put the right size on. But either way, you will know because if it's a long screw, it's not really going to fit on a short, on a short uh, uh, thread. So after that is done, power it and make sure it switches on and that's it. Thank you.